In this video, I'll discuss REITs or real estate investment trusts, and we're starting right now. Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Keystone Financial Academy. My name is Elliot, and if you're new to this channel, I invite you to join the community by subscribing and turning on notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. In general, most people agree that investing in real estate is a good idea. But how exactly would the average person do it? Probably with buying and selling houses. Now this of course is a reasonable approach, but it does take some down payment money to get started, and a lot of time, effort, and knowledge to squeeze a profit out of residential real estate. Whether you flip homes or rent them out, it's not easy nor cheap, nor do you make a profit right away. Same thing goes for commercial properties, but now you need even more money to get into and sustain that business. Instead of this, wouldn't it be good to invest in real estate the same way as you invest in regular companies by buying stock? So yes, in fact, you can do this, and that is the central premise behind REITs or real estate investment trusts. REITs allow you to invest in all sorts of real estate and commercial infrastructure, much like you would with any regular company. So what exactly is a REIT? It's nothing more than a company that buys, develops, owns, and in most cases operates income producing real estate. What sort of real estate? It can be retail space, industrial, self storage, data centers, hotels, hospitals, residential, and many, many other types. Where exactly does this income stream come from? Simply put, rent. So to summarize, a REIT is a company that does the following. One, it collects money from investors by selling company shares. Two, it uses this money to buy and develop economically desirable real estate. Three, it produces income by charging rent on these properties from paying clients. And four, it pays out a regular cash dividend to the investors for their investment. Now investors simply buy shares of whatever REIT they choose and hold them like any company stock, selling them if they want to, but otherwise just hanging on to them and receiving cash cash dividend payments. The bottom line is that REITs present an excellent opportunity to get in on real estate investing, especially commercial real estate investing, and preserve liquidity with easy to sell stock instead of actually buying physical real estate. REITs as we know them today appeared in 1960 and from the start they were designed to allow regular investors to diversify their portfolio into real estate holdings. REITs operated as business trusts up until the Tax Reform Act of 1976, which then authorized them to be set up as regular corporations. The first REIT was American Realty Trust, a mortgage REIT, and it was established in 1961. The first REITs of the 1960s invested heavily in shopping centers and shopping malls, followed by lodging and resorts, and then apartments and warehouses. Then in the 1970s and 80s, they started investing in office buildings, self-storage, healthcare centers, and even racetracks. Then in the 1990s, it was factory outlets, golf courses, movie theaters, prisons, telecom towers, and auto dealerships. In the 2000s, new acquisitions included gas stations, banks, and data centers. Basically anything that sat on land was fair game for investment. Today over 225 REITs actively trade on the US markets, and together they have a market capitalization of over 1 trillion, while holding over 2 trillion in gross assets, while collectively owning over a half a million properties across the US. An estimated 80 million million Americans own shares in REITs, either personally or more likely through 401k or some sort of pension fund. So here are some essential facts that you should know about REITs as a potential investor. Three main types of REITs exist today. Most of them are equity REITs which own and manage land and properties. The second type is the mortgage REIT which invests in mortgage backed securities or bundled mortgages. Finally the third type is a hybrid REIT which combines both approaches. In this video I'll only talk about equity REITs REITs as they are the most common type. Equity REITs can invest in almost any property, but their most common holdings are from 12 categories. In alphabetical order, they are data centers, such as cloud computing, diversified, which is just a mix of properties, healthcare, such as hospitals and clinics, industrial, such as factories and commercial space, infrastructure, such as pipelines and cell towers, lodging, resorts, which is mostly hotels, office, which is just corporate space, residential, which is apartment 
complexes and homes, retail, such as malls and storefront properties, self-storage, which of course is personal storage centers, specialty, which is miscellaneous, non-categorized holdings, and finally timberlands, which is timber production. REITs can be public and traded on exchanges or public and not traded. They could also be privately held. In this video, we'll only talk about publicly held and traded REITs as they are the most common. The entire industry, by the way, is represented by the National Association of Real Estate Investment Trust or NARIT, and you can find a lot of useful information on their member REITs at their website REIT.com. Finally, to finish up with the technical details of REITs, it's interesting to know that these organizations have a special tax status with the IRS, and certain provisions regulate what company can become a REIT and how a REIT is to behave once it becomes one. A REIT must invest at least 75% of its holdings in real estate or cash equivalents. It must also receive at least 75% of its income from rents, property sales, or interest on mortgages. And finally, what is most relevant to investors, a REIT must pay out at least 90% of its taxable income as dividends to their shareholder investors. Okay, so that was the technical background on REITs. Let's now talk about investing in them. First, here are some pros and cons. Pro number one is steady income. This is the main reason most investors flock to REITs, the steady and relatively high dividend payments, which are usually significantly more than most other dividend paying stocks. Pro number two is portfolio diversification. REIT stocks are real estate holdings, setting them apart from regular corporate stock and government bonds. They do not necessarily follow stock bond trends or the economy in general. It is often said that when stocks zig, REITs zag. This is a great opportunity to diversify and protect your portfolio. Pro number three is opportunity to invest in real estate. As I mentioned earlier in this video, to have actual real estate such as houses and buildings in your portfolio takes a lot of cash up front and a lot of management hassles once you buy. Owning REITs gives you access to real estate investing without the burden of purchasing and managing actual properties. Now there are some cons to REITs as well. Con number one is dividend taxation. REIT dividends, in other words investor profits, with some exceptions, are taxed as ordinary income, not at the more advantageous capital gains rate, which most other dividend profits are taxed at. Con number two is REIT sensitivity to interest rates. This topic can be somewhat controversial among financial experts. Common wisdom dictates rising interest rates are bad for REITs as share values decreases and investors divert their money to bonds. However, it's a complicated relationship because rising rates also indicate an economy heating up which is good for overall REIT business. And finally, con number three is little control over holdings. This might not matter much to income seeking investors, but you have much less of a voice in what and where to invest with when you deal with REITs versus purchasing real estate yourself. You can certainly pick what sector you'd like your REIT to be in for some measure of control, but just don't expect to be able to tell the REIT specifically what holdings to acquire, just as you cannot tell a mutual fund what stocks to buy. Now, when you're considering what REITs to invest in, it of course helps to have some data to look at. With REITs, that data is a bit unique as compared to your typical dividend paying company stock. Instead of looking for something like the PE ratio or book value, you would instead need to take a look at, at something called the FFO, which stands for funds from operations and is a measure of cash flow, which is essential to understanding the performance of a REIT. It is expressed as an FFO payout percentage and the higher the value, the better. The second critical item to look at is the REIT's AFFO, which is the adjusted funds from operations. AFFO is just an extension of FFO and is intended to be a bit of a more of an accurate representation. The metric is also known as cash available for distribution and it adds in adjustments for recurring capital expenditures as well as gains such as rent increases. It's also expressed as a percentage with a higher number being better. Finally, it should be mentioned that if you decide that analyzing individual REITs is not for you, you can always let someone else do this and invest in REIT exchange traded funds or ETFs. There are about three dozen such funds and they vary in what types of REITs they invest in. Just like stock, mutual funds and ETFs, REIT ETFs may be a great idea for individual investors who don't want to pick individual REITs but still want to get in on the market. Okay, so if you are willing to research and pick your own REITs to invest in, the very first thing you should think about is what sector 
sectors to invest in because clearly they're not all doing equally well. Think about what's going on right now as far as long-term trends and short-term trends related to the COVID-19 pandemic. One thing we can state right now from observing the market is that malls and retail space as well as corporate office space is not doing too well right now. With the former, it's been a long trend of decline and closures of malls and storefront retail space, while with the latter, it's been more of a recent trend with people teleworking more and not coming into the offices. So right now, you should probably avoid REITs that have extensive holdings in such spaces. So what is doing well? Well, for one, it's self-storage. Another growth area is data centers and infrastructure as more and more of our lives are moving online. So in this matter of reasoning, go through all the REIT sectors one by one and decide if these assets are on the decline or not and invest accordingly. One final piece of good REIT investing advice is to look for REITs that lock in long-term triple net leases with their clients, where a triple net means when a client pays for everything. When a REIT has many of these types of leases in its portfolio, it's a very good sign of future long-term profitability. Finally, to close out this REITs video, let's take a look at a couple of very well-known REITs so you have an idea of some of the names out there. Now, these are not endorsements in any way, rather an introduction to get you looking at these REITs on your own. Perhaps one of the best known REITs out there is Realty Income, symbol O. Now, this REIT does deal with retail space, but the good kind, forming long-term leases with profitable companies such as Walgreens, 7-Eleven, and Dollar General. Realty Income is also a dividend aristocrat and has increased its dividend for over 50 years. Its current yield is 4.7% and the shares currently trade at about $60 each. Digital Realty, symbol DLR, is another well-known and very large REIT. They are one of the largest data center real estate operators in terms of the number of properties owned, which is 284 facilities across 23 countries on six continents. Demand for data centers has increased significantly due to the pandemic, along with the demand for streaming services. The REIT's current yield is 3.4% and the shares currently trade at about $130 each. The third and final REIT we will introduce is Stag Industrial, symbol Stag, and this REIT invests in e-commerce warehouse with Amazon being its largest client. Stag owns 462 such warehouses with a total of 92 million square feet. With the incredible growth of Amazon, the REIT has seen significant profits in recent years. Its current yield is 4.8% and the shares currently trade at about $30 each. With all these REITs, you get a quarterly or sometimes a monthly dividend payout when you own their shares. All right, that was the basics of real estate investment trust. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please consider subscribing and I will see you guys soon.